Good morning, everyone, or for whatever time it is around the world, wherever you may be. Um, today, I thought I would put together a video, um, quite spontaneous. I've been thinking about it for a while, but I was a bit shy and nervous about doing a video of you know my face and me talking. And but I thought it's about time I should uh, get over my fears and just go for it. To talk about a really important topic when it comes to aromatherapy and cold process soap making. I for sure had a lot of issues at the beginning when I was a new soap maker a few years back about um, certain fragrances and uh, blends that I kind of liked, you know, mixing together and they smell really great. And then, you know, when you first put them into the soap, the batter smells great as the soap you know waiting to set up in the mold it smells great but then after maybe a few days after cutting and definitely after the full four week cure time that you just can't smell anything and at the beginning i spent a lot of time and money uh getting formulas right and perfecting certain blends right and um i, I thought it would be great to share some of that knowledge with people that are kind of starting out and understanding how to uh, mix uh, different essential oils together and about the different notes. It's really important to blend different notes together. Uh, top, there are three types of notes. There are top notes, middle notes, and base notes. And to get a long lasting fragrance in your cold process soap, it's really important to take those all into consideration. Um, as you know, essential oils aren't cheap, you know, and even for a hobbyist, they can kind of be quite, they can be expensive, put it that way. And as a business, most definitely like in soap making as, you know, as that's my main product that I sell in my business, essential oils are definitely the most expensive input. And I would, you know, as a consumer myself, cause I use my products, um, and you know all my family does and friends too and I, I personally would like a bar that smells nice and that will last throughout the time you have it or in the curing time and because it could very well be a few months between it being fully cured and it actually going out to the retail stores I supply to and online that the consumer might actually get it in their hands and it's really important for when they pick up, you know, soap bar and, you know, that even this is, um, you know, sweet orange and bergamot. Um, I always add a base to my blends. So I usually do um, maximum 5% per oil amount. So I usually make my batches in 1000 grams and I do maximum 50 grams per 1000 grams of oil. So yeah, max 50 grams of essential oil. And that's not for all essential oils. That's for more of the top weaker notes. So this is a uh, sweet orange and bergamot there, top notes. I actually switched to tenfold orange essential oil because I just could not get the orange to stick in the past. And I really wanted more of the orange smell to come through as opposed to mixing it with a base note as well. And I didn't really want to smell the base. I wanted it to be, this for this particular bar, I wanted it to be very orangey. I love orange smell. It's a really popular bar too, actually. The orange smells very uplifting. It smells really good. So for the orange tenfold, for example, I do 25 grams of orange tenfold. I do 10 grams of bergamot and 10 grams of cedarwood essential or cedarwood atlas. I find cedarwood atlas smells the best out of all the cedarwoods. And um, using it at 1%, right, minimum, that's to help anchor top notes, citrus oils. So anything that sits in the top note would be, you know, grapefruit, orange, lemon, lime. Um, what else is there that I'm missing? Her herbs, herbs, um, herbaceous essential oils uh, like rosemary and thyme. They tend to be top notes as well. They tend to not survive the saponification process as well as other essential oils. So you could put easily put 30 grams or 3% 
in per you know per batch and you will not smell it after it's fully cured so it's really important to mix top notes with base notes mixing starting at one percent uh, for base notes which is your sandalwood which is pretty expensive so I wouldn't recommend sandalwood as a base note my two go-to's are patchouli and cedarwood essential oil they're really great very affordable compared to a lot of the other floral essential oils like lavender and rose geranium that tend to be more on the expensive side and the one thing you don't want to do is you know um, do a blend of you know like say for example another blend I have is lavender and rose together 1.5% each so 15 grams each they're middle notes but they can be top to middle notes so that's not a pure middle where it would kind of last a while in the you know a bar of soap over the cure period plus a few month period or even a year after you've actually incorporated it and you know in your soap recipe and it being cured and sitting there for a while middle notes can top to middle notes can sort of flash off in a sense so even with middle notes you still want to anchor them down with a base so uh, let me just as an example this is my coconut olive bar I've done a video on making that and that is 2% cedar wood, 2% tangerine. So tangerine is top note, it's a citrus oil, and obviously cedar wood is a base oil. And these have been sitting curing for at least a month. And I've got some new batches behind, you probably won't be able to see from there. And um, I can still smell it. Tangerine is still there. It's very pungent, it still comes through, the cedar wood comes through, so you get a nice citrusy, woody, fragrance with that so it's really important to do equal parts if you want to do a citrus blend you do an equal part of a top note to an equal part of a bottom note a base note I should say right so those are really important um, to take into consideration orange tenfold on the other hand as I was talking about before um, it is a top to middle note, so it's not a purely top note where it'll flash off and you won't smell it. It does kind of last longer in cold process soap. Um, so yeah, mixing, still mix it with the base, obviously still mix it with the base. I always mix any top to middle note with 1% cedar wood, always. That's with any bar, no matter which bar it is. It's into the exception of the tangerine and cedar wood, I did 2% each. Um, but in other blends like, uh, let's see. So this is uh, my double oat bar, it still smells great. This is um, a few months old now, I've got a few left, and I do 1.5% rose geranium, 1.5% lavender, French lavender, and 1% uh, cedar wood. So you don't smell the cedar wood at 1%, even at 1.5% you won't smell the cedar wood, it's when you go to 2% and above you start to smell the cedar wood. Patchouli is a different story. Um, if you do 1% patchouli, you'll smell the patchouli. It's a lot more pungent and it sticks a lot more than cedar wood does in a, in a sense of uh, the percentage at 1%. You can really smell the patchouli coming through. There is another bar. This is the Coco Shea bar. Oh, these are one of my new favorites. These are 70% shea butter and 30% coconut oil. And that's 1.5% patchouli and 1.5% uh, sweet orange. And the patchouli smells really strong at 1.5%. So it's really important to anchor any middle or top notes with a base note. And this is a uh, sweet orange and cinnamon. So it's uh, sweet orange tenfold. So that's. Um, 2.5% tenfold, I do 0.3% cinnamon, oh it's beautiful, sweet orange and cinnamon, and I do 1% also cedar wood, so you don't smell the cedar wood, but you, you definitely smell the um, sweet orange and the cinnamon in that. Yeah, so I will actually be mixing a I'll show you a 
general idea of how to blend essential oils together. I'll be making later today um, another popular bar of mine, which they're out of stock at the moment because I'm upping the size of my bars. So the next batch of my almond bars, frankincense and cedar, will be one inch. And frankincense is also a base note, but it has a much lower flush point compared to cedar water patchouli. I think um, by memory, cedar wood has a flash point cedar wood atlas has a flash point of 105 degrees celsius which is very high and cold processed soaps don't even come anywhere near that um, but it's to just give you an idea of what temperature cedar wood atlas can survive and patchouli i think by memory um, is 86 degrees celsius so they both got quite a high tolerance to heat and they survive through the saponification process. I've had soap in the past that I've made purely with cedar wood at 2.5 to 3% and with patchouli as well. And even after three years of them just sitting in the corner and me getting to them when I have the time, when I kind of finish my other bars, um, the smell is still very there. And it's just like I've made it a few weeks ago. There's really no difference. So base notes really do stick over time. Frankincense, on the other hand, is a little more delicate. I think the flush point for frankincense serrata is 61 degrees Celsius. And cold processed soap can very easily reach that temperature range in the mold. So when you get your heat gun, your temperature gun, and you, you, know, you see what the temperature is on the top, it might show 50 degrees but below inside it's much hotter it can reach up to 70 degrees actually um i've seen i've cut soap because i use a lot of sodium lactate and pink salt in my recipes all my recipes so i can cut my bars the loaves in about three hours minimum and sometimes when i used to when i first kind of played around with all that i went to cut them into bars and I, you know, and I felt really hot in my hand. I had gloves on and I'm like, wow, that's really hot. Even though the top said 40 degrees, 45 degrees. But once I got inside the bar and I really put the gun on it, it was 65 to 70 degrees. And the more in the middle it was, the hotter. So outside of the loaf, it was cooler. So it was around the 40 degree mark. And then as you go in, it gets hotter and hotter and hotter. Um, that's where like less air and airflow and you know the evaporation of the heat can uh, actually escapes from the mold so right in the middle it gets very hot and frankincense would not survive that process plus the saponification process is of quite a violent reaction right even though it feels good and great on the skin after it's done but uh, during the reaction there's a lot of chemical changes and it can affect an essential oil even if it's a base note if the flash point's not high enough it can really uh hinder the the smell and the end result and um i'll show another particular bar that has lasted quite a few months and this smell of this is lavender and cedar wood so this one in particular because i love cedar wood cedar wood's my one of my favorite essential oils I can just sit there smelling it all day um, which is not something I recommend because you get a headache but yeah I um, just love cedar wood anything with cedar wood I love and this one is 1.5% French lavender 1.5% cedar wood and the four months later it's just like I made it a few months ago um, not a few months ago a few days ago and I've just cut it and and the smell is still quite quite strong and um, another thing actually i might add um, in all my soaps no matter what what it's for for the hair the face the body i use clays in all my recipes and even in um this is just an off cut of a uh, actually i don't even know what this one is actually oh okay yeah so that's um that's frankincense and cedar wood right this was a old this was an off cut from a previous batch so it's about four months old now three to four months old and um i can still smell the frankincense in the cedar wood um it's a bit hard to smell in this room because there's so much soap and so much smells going around so i have to really put my nose on it um but yeah so this particular one 
has survived it's because i've even though frankincense has got a lower flush point it's more delicate um i've did an equal part to see the wood atlas so it's helped stabilize the frankincense and i wouldn't actually say frankincense is a base i'd say it's more middle it's a middle to base yeah, I'll, I would say that just from my experience in cold process soaps and even mixing aromatherapy rolls and stuff, just from my nose, maybe other people, they can smell it straight away. But from me, my experience, I find that um, frankincense is more of a middle middle note than a base. And even this one, even though it's plain white bar, sorry, I got sidetracked. Um, this, have clay, this has clay in it. This has white Australian kale and clay. So I've read many other soapers giving their inputs on how to anchor essential oils in their soap recipes and clay is on top of the list of recommendations. And I've always made soap with clay. I just don't think I've ever made soap without clay. I just love the way it does the glide feeling on the skin. It's got really good detoxifying properties for the skin too. It's a natural coloring. There's nothing artificial in it. So it's great to use clays to color your soaps. And I think at the same time with my soaps, why they hold their scent very well, two reasons, I use clays. Secondly, I use the appropriate amount of a base note to a blend. So that I think those both those factors help make the scent last longer. So for clays, the percentage for clays, I do 3%. So I do minimum 3%. I tend to not go over 4% per 1,000 grams of oil. So I always work with 1,000 grams on my batches. So that's maximum, maximum 40 grams per batch. But usually 30 grams is enough to get a good color and to get the benefits of what you're after from the specific clay if you are formulating the bar for a specific issue like um, this one for example this one is swirled with green clay green australian clay and i've actually didn't want to use titanium dioxide even though one of a couple of my bars do have them but i tend to try and stay away from titanium dioxide it does have a negative reputation of you know the, the powder when you're mixing it to go into your lungs and it can cause damage so i tend to kind of not go anywhere near it but i tried to do a white swirl with zinc oxide which is relatively inexpensive and behaves just like clays on the skin it gives that glide feeling um, and it actually came out quite well. And this is a 60% olive extra virgin olive oil recipe. So it still came out quite wide, even with the um, olive oil content in there. So yeah, like I guess those kind of, you know, helped anchor as well because I've got clays in there, but this is targeted more for oily skin. So the green clay is really good for oily skin. This is peppermint and um, eucalyptus essential oils, which is um, really good at with oily skin too. So I find that combination in summer for me, I've got oily skin in summer. This bar is really good in summer. So yeah, um, all my bars have clays. This one is white clay on the bottom. So when I split the batch, say if I'm doing a three, four, let's just say a four kilo batch which is what I work with. Um, then when I split it, I'll do 60 grams in one and then 60 grams in the other. So that's uh, 3% in each. And so, you know, that I guess helps anchor the smell and also adds nice colors and textures to it too. I'll show another popular bar of mine. This is the almond bar. And this is also with white kale and clay, and the top is with pink clay. And these are about a month old now, just over a month. And yeah, they smell great. This is um, rose geranium and herb wood, 1.5% inch and 1% cedar wood. And yeah, like it just anchors, it helps keep the middle notes in, intact in the finished product. Her wood and rose geranium are also middle notes. So, like I said before, always 1% minimum in any blend you do, 
always add a 1% minimum base note. I recommend cedar wood, as I said earlier, because if you add it at strictly 1 to 1.5%, it doesn't overpower what, whatever else you're mixing with it, and it'll help anchor it down. It will survive the saponification process and the end bar after curing plus many months and even years after you'll still smell your blend so it's really important so yeah here i want to talk about um, some of the benefits of using essential oils and why they are becoming really really popular uh, as time goes by, I know in my time, man, I'm 32 years old, and 15 years ago it was not really something that was well known. Like people knew kind of a little bit about it, but it's not something that people sort of sought out, and they weren't really interested in, you know, purchasing products with essential oils it was like a very niche type thing but now it's becoming very popular and I mean I, even like with me personally it wasn't a thing in my life really that I considered up until I was maybe 25 you know and then I started to kind of get into essential oils and blending and I became quite addicted actually better sense of the word but yes yeah, so essential oils are skin and environmentally safe okay so obviously people are going to have certain allergies or maybe certain sensitization to certain essential oils but generally speaking they are safe if you don't if they're compatible with your skin clearly yeah so um they are also pure and natural obviously speaking and they generally don't have other fillers or ingredients in them they just purely are the oil that are extracted from the plant source material so they're usually um, distilled by the steam distillation or cold pressing so those are two main methods of essential oils um, they are very concentrated so i wouldn't apply them directly to the skin they actually can be toxic if you don't use them correctly and they never are meant to be used neat on the skin. They're always meant to be diluted, like in a soap or in a carrier oil or a body wash or whatever it is that you're trying to scent with essential oils. They always have to be diluted. And I always refer to essential oils as plant medicine. So always handle it just like you would with any, with any other drug, really, like, you know, in take care and don't get them on your skin you can overdose if you inhale too much or if you get too much on your skin it goes straight into your bloodstream so it's very important if you are mixing or if you're not experienced in mixing uh, to wear gloves i know i didn't wear gloves in my video but i've done it a thousand times and i didn't get any on me so i mean but if you're worried about that sort of stuff i highly recommend you wear gloves and some people i've been working with essential oils for years I tend to, when I first started, I have to admit, I used to get headaches because I just was not used to essential oils. I never really mixed and I was always sniffing. And so like as time has gone by, my, I've gotten kind of used to it. Plus I don't sniff directly if I'm, you know, working on a new blend. I won't just, you know, shove it all together and then sniff it a thousand times. I would put a, just a couple of drops on a paper towel and mix certain bases and middle notes and top notes and just a slight, smell it slightly on my nose and it's fine after that. But yes, many times when I first started, I would get some on my skin, I wouldn't think much of it or I would smell quite a lot of it and I wouldn't think much of it and I would get headaches and I would feel a bit ill and so just take care when you are mixing and make sure well ventilated area that's really important don't do it in an enclosed space when I did that at the beginning I did kind of mix in a very enclosed space and the window was closed and I didn't really think of all these things so it's really important to handle it with care so here are some examples of top, middle, and base notes. Um, these are all uh, essential oils I have on hand personally that I've worked with personally. So in cold process soap, it may be a little different if you are blending like, uh, for example, um, thyme and you know rosemary in a roller blend or in a body wash or in a liquid soap. It might behave a bit differently. It doesn't have to go through heat changes and saponification and all that. So this is purely 
what I've noticed from my experience about which category they kind of fall into. And yeah, I've it hasn't let me down so far. When I want to create a blend, I, you don't necessarily have to have all three. You can have just a top and a base. You can have just a middle and a base. In some occasions, you can have a top and a middle without a base. Like, for example, you can have like peppermint and lavender, you know, say 2% each, 20 and 20 grams, and that will hold fairly well, um, but possibly quite possibly like maybe over the six month mark or a few months past it might fade out a little so you kind of can get away with it for a while if you are going to use it within a few months and you're not planning to sell it it's just for home use and then it's more than fine but just like with anything i always recommend as i was you know said it before in the video one percent at least cedar wood and you won't you can't go wrong you know so i, I would highly suggest just kind of working with always adding, adding a base for sure and you obviously you can have just a middle and a base and a top and a base so that's generally what i find that works really really well in cold process soap in candles it, it's different again you don't have to have a base you can have a top and a middle and it'll work fine uh, you can have purely a top note in like a citrus but you have to add it at 8% per wax ratio and you have to actually add it at 52 degrees or below because the flash point for most citrus oils are below 52 degrees. I know like lemon and lime are around the 42 degree mark Celsius. So adding it as quickly as possible to your wax before it starts to set up and cool off so you preserve the the you know, finished product and the scent and for it to actually have a good cold and hot throw when you light the candle um, but I still even in that scenario would suggest just maybe adding a little bit of a base to it just to help fix it but yeah generally across the board it's fairly similar but it just depends on you know what you're using it in and stuff and the, this particular top middle note and base is purely I guess for cold process soap so um, this is a blending example that I make for one of my recipes, um, the cocoa, olive, sweet orange and bergamot bar. Uh, I actually do have a video of that particular bar, the making process, if you want to go check that out. So yeah, general idea, top note, 2.5% or 25 grams, bergamot and cedar wood, 1% each, 10 grams, and it brings it to 35 grams total. Oh, sorry, 45 grams total, which is 4.5%. This, um, this creates a long-lasting aroma and will definitely survive throughout the ages and the curing process. And um, many months have gone by and I've picked up, you know, off-cuts or samples of this particular blend and it's just as pungent as it was when I first cut it and after curing time and it's still going strong. I've used a, a, a one of these bars actually about six months after I made it and it still was very nice. It did not dim at all. So very, very good blend. I think it's just the right amount of each particular oil. And even through all that, the bergamot, even though that's not tenfold like the orange, so it does flush off a lot easier, you can still smell it because of the, the anchoring from the base note. This is um, a particular blend I call Ocean Breeze Blend. Um, that's actually, I have also have another video of this particular soap. On my YouTube channel, the Soul Safety Ocean Water Soap. Um, this combination of essential oil actually goes into that bar, and it's just such a beautiful all rounder. It's just one of those smells you just have to blend yourself and try it. Um, it's been quite a few weeks now, well, it's actually been more than six weeks, and I've got a few of those bars left and beautiful smell it still smells just like when i first unmolded it
and yeah, definitely a must try. Beautiful if you like peppermint. I'm not really a peppermint fan. I really don't like it much, but this combo, it just complements each other extremely well. Beautiful scent. Beautiful scent. Very, very nice. Here is another really nice floral a blend that I also use um, and it's just such a beautiful smell. Definitely you can smell the lavender and the rose together and the cedar would really helps anchor the two oils. Um, personally I've smelled bars with this particular combo after a year and a half and they just still smell great. There is no difference in from when I first made it, it's really nice. And once you get into it, into the shower, the smell really comes through again. So I really think like over time, the clays, as I mentioned earlier, plus adding a good amount of base to your blend really helps anchor the, the, the essential oils of the soap and long, very long lasting. So um, this is another one of my favorite blends, lime, frankincense, and cedar wood. This is what I'll actually be mixing in the next portion of my video. Um, if you don't want the cedar wood smell to come through that much, you can reduce the cedar wood to 1% again. It doesn't really come through at 1 or even 1.2%. It's when you get to 1.5 and above, it kind of starts to come through. But if you're not a cedar wood fan, you can you can easily just put 1% of the cedar wood and you can bump up the frankincense to 2%, which is totally fine. That, that'll that work as well. Um, I've personally never tested that particular ratio, but if, I mean, considering how many blends I've made, I think it will be more than adequate. I think it'll be fine. You can even up your lime as well, but it just depends what you want to come through. It's just like the general rule. But this combination is very nice, very, very nice. So there are three instances where you would add your essential oil blend. I just wanted to touch base on this before I continue with the video. Um, never add your essential oils before you mix your lime water in because that will definitely turn your essential oil into soap or at least part of it and the smell will greatly be affected and I, I wouldn't recommend that. So I have done that in the past and it's just a waste of a batch of soap because even the base notes and all that didn't really come through at the end so I would highly advise against mixing before you put your lye water in um, even before emulsification so really blend it well for 20 to 30 seconds make sure your lye and your oils are completely incorporated before putting in your essential oils me personally I like to do it after emulsion or depending if I'm working with an essential oil blend that does trace quite fast, I would do split batching for colouring. So I would split the batch, colour them quick, then add my essential oil blend and whisk them, then recombine for in the pot swirl, then I'll pour into the mould. Hello again, so we're ready to actually mix. Just a little blend that I make for Frank for frankincense and cedar wood, the almond butter. And so, always, always when you're measuring, weigh your essential oils. You never go by mills when you weigh for cold process soap or for anything really, even for candles, ceramic therapy rolls, everything. You never go by mills. You always weigh it because it's easily, you can easily add more than what you required. And there are certain dermal limits for certain essential oils and they can irritate your skin. So really important to work with dermal limits um, and best to research each essential oil and their dermal, dermal limit. And that's like the maximum percentage of, you know, you know, in a finished product that you can apply to your skin for it before it starts to give you a rush or before irritation potential can happen. So it's really important to do your own research on dermal limits for each particular oil that you're working with. Um, for this particular blend, I've got a top note of lime West Indian essential oil. This is steam distilled, so um, there's no phototoxicity with that. And of course, frankincense, serrata, beautiful smell. Love it, it's got a sweet, 
woody smell, very, very nice. And Cedar Wood Atlas Essential are one of my favorites. This is my go-to. This is in everything. In any type of blend I do, unless I'm using patchouli, um, this is, you'll just find it in my ingredients list and everything. Cedar Wood Atlas. It's just the best, best essential oil you can use to anchor any blend, any blend. It's just magnificent. And as you know, I add vitamin E, 70%, mixed toaster ferrules to uh, any essential oil blend I had to cold process soap. So, I already know my base oils for the batch I'm going to be making later is two kilos, so 2,000 grams. So I know, discussed before, maximum 5% per batch. So I can do maximum 100 grams per, for that two, two kilo oil batch, but we won't be needing that much. It's literally 1.5% lime, oh sorry, 1.5% cedar wood and frankincense, so 15 grams each per batch and then 0.5% lime and that the lime will come through very very mild but it's more to uplift the blend too it's got like a nice citrusy addition to it and because frankincense is already slightly sweet these two complement each other very well and then obviously to anchor plus you I want the cedar wood smell as well so I'll be doing 1.5% for that so Two, since it's a 2,000 gram batch, 1.5% of cedar wood is 30 grams. Same with frankincense. And it's 0.5% for lime, so 10 grams. So 30 plus 30 is 60, plus 10 is 70. So that's 70 grams of essential oil all up for two kilo batch. So that works out to be 3.5%. Uh, so let's turn the scale on. It's going to tear itself automatically. So let's start with limes. So we need 10 grams of lime. If you go like a gram over or a few, you know, like under a gram, half a gram or whatever, it's not a big deal, it's fine. So we'll get to 10 grams, 10 grams on the dot, I don't know if you can see that, but I'll just, the bulb kind of slightly shifted because I moved it, but we'll just say it's 10 grams, even that's 10.14, but that's, that's no problem. I don't know if you're able to see that on the camera. Right, so 10, so we need 30 grams of frankincense. So let's take the lid off for that. So it'll be 40 total because of the lime. You don't have to do it that way, you can um, tear it as you do it, so, and I went just slightly over, which is, that's fine, I don't know if you can see on the camera, sometimes a lid is somewhere to get on, so I'll just put that down there, oh sorry I didn't go over, I even confused myself. It's meant to be 40, 10 grams of the um, lime, and 30 grams of the frankincense. There we go, just close that. And then another three, 30 grams of cedar, well that's 70, 70 grams total. Had a brain freeze there. I see the what's almost finished actually. So I'm 
gonna have to take the top off since it's almost finished. So I need to go to 70. really slowly because it's hard you can't take out yeah so that's 72 which is fine so it's a gram extra in the batch so it's not not a big deal whatsoever sometimes I go some you can go slightly over it's not gonna hurt your skin or the blend at all so it's totally fine so we'll pop that back Right, so I do 0.7% per 1000 grams of vitamin E, so we need 14 grams. And if you go slightly over, which I always do, so that's 16.2 uh, grams, which is totally fine. Um, you can go up to 2% with vitamin E, and it's without any irritation on the skin, which is totally fine. Um, but you don't need that much. 0.7 is more than adequate for, um, you know, for a soap recipe. Helps extend the life, life of the soap bar too, prevents oxidization, and of course vitamin E is really good for the skin. So with when you do mix your essential oils, when you mix them all in, don't just pop the lid back on, mix it really well. It's really important that it's very well incorporated before you actually add it to your soap because you want to raise the flash point and the heat tolerance of the lime and the frankincense. So making sure it's all mixed together will make sure that it lasts throughout the saponification process, the curing time, usually three to four weeks plus however many months or even years after you actually make the original blend into a recipe. So yeah, it's really important to make sure it's all incorporated nicely. So I'll, I'll just show you the scalp to high level just to see. It looks like it's all mixed in very nice. Mm, smells beautiful. Very, very nice blend. So I'll use that whenever later today or if I have other stuff to do I can use that anytime during the week it's airtight and uh, it's all done so I've got my vitamin vitamin E in that and my cedar wood frankincense and lime and whenever I'm ready doing my soap I'll just grab that and throw it in before light trace and incorporate that into the blend very well into the batter so it's important to always weigh your essential oils, very, very important. Thank you very much for watching. We got through my first video of me talking. And um, yes, so I've become a little more confident, hopefully, and after this video. So in the next videos, I'll probably won't be using text over so much in my demonstrations when I make certain recipes. So I think I might just do voiceovers or I might just talk during. So it just depends on um, how noisy it is at my house. <laughs> but yes, uh, thanks very much for watching and hopefully you've learned a little bit about how to successfully incorporate an essential oil blend that will last in your cold process soap recipe. Until next time, be safe and happy blending.